Hello Avondale parents and students and uh, staff, everyone part of the Avondale family. It's Mr. Seal, the principal here. Uh, wanted to give just a little more information about how we're going to reopen school. Um, I have a video posted uh, here on the Avondale Elementary YouTube channel that outlines a few things, but I kind of wanted to walk through a few other things so that uh, some more specific questions that uh, parents may have uh, can be answered even before we, um, you know, have the principal Q&A session we're going to have Monday, November 2nd. So I'm standing here in front of the school and right here behind me you will see the uh, lunchroom loading dock right here and if you are a virtual student, if you've uh, decided to remain a virtual student, then you will still be able to pick up lunches right here uh, behind me, uh, but the time has changed. That time will now be between, between 10 and 11 in the morning only. So if you are a virtual student, you can still pick up lunch. And that is Monday through Friday, including Wednesday, the day that nobody is in the building, um, between 10 and 11. Between 11 and 1 will be when our in-person students will be able to eat lunch here. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on. So that's, uh, that's the first thing you should know. So here we are in front of the school. And uh, this is where buses will continue to drop off. This is also where uh, parents will be dropping off students and picking them up in the afternoons. Um, now, no parents are gonna be allowed to come in the building. Um, and uh, uh, that includes preschool. So if you're the parent of a preschool student, uh, you'll get some more specific directions on how that's going to go. Uh, but uh, this is where we will still pick up and drop off. So here I am inside the lobby, and of course I'm wearing a mask because everyone is gonna be required to wear a mask uh, while they are in the building. That's staff, that's students, that's me. Uh, that's anyone who uh, is gonna be in the building. You must have a mask on. Um, so I'm gonna take it off just for the purposes of doing this video so you can hear me a little more clearly, but on a normal school day, I would have that mask on all day long. Now, I'm standing here in the lobby, and uh, what we're going to be doing when students come in in the mornings, normally they would come in, they'd go to the cafeteria, get breakfast, and then they'd go into the gym. Well, we're not going to be doing that anymore. Um, in, uh, in, in the spirit of remaining safe and practicing good, safe, healthy habits, uh, students, when they come in the building, will go straight to their homeroom teacher's classroom. Now, one of these stairwells will be designated a uh, third through fifth grade stairwell and the other stairwell will be designated a K through two stairwell. Now when they get upstairs to the lobby, there'll be another stairwell that will be an up only stairwell just for third through fifth and another stairwell that will be up only for K through two. Now once they get to the floor, uh, the next floor up there, kindergarten and a couple of first grade classes won't have to go up any more stairs. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that students were divided so there was less traffic on the stairwells, um, but also make sure we identify different stairwells as up or down only so that uh, there wasn't uh, the proximity passing of each other going up and down stairs at the same time. So that's one of the ways in which we're uh, changing a few things here in the building to make sure that students are staying safe and safely distanced. Okay, so I'm walking down one of the hallways here. Um, I'm on the third floor up here. And um, luckily for Avondale students, these hallways are extremely wide. Um, but uh, the, the hallways will work exactly like a street does where there will be um, a very specific way you're going to go one way and then uh, going the other way. Uh, so it will move just like traffic does. Well, American traffic. If we were in England, it would be the other way around. Um, but uh, we'll have students going one, everybody will be moving forward on the right side, on their right side of the hallway. Um, and uh, you saw back behind us uh, the restrooms. Um, teachers will have specific times that students will go to restrooms and only a couple of students will be in the restroom at a time. And this is going to allow for uh, uh, making sure we don't have too many folks in there at the same time, socially distancing as we need to, uh, but also plenty of opportunities to wash hands. Now I should mention as, uh, as we're walking here um, that each teacher has been um, given PPE um, products, and um, some of those include hand sanitizers for the classroom, uh, two masks per student and per teacher, as well as face shields 
for every teacher and every student. Uh, so the district has gone uh, really to great lengths to make sure that we have uh, enough supplies to keep all the students and the staff safe in regards to um, masks, shields, uh, things that will you know, make sure and keep hands clean throughout the day. So I'm here in a classroom, and uh, this classroom looks like uh, a lot of the classrooms are going to look. You can see how uh, the desks are uh, spaced apart. Uh, in this teacher's classroom, um, what uh, she has done is that on one side of this, uh, you can see the desks are paired up here. Well, one of these will be a uh, B schedule, and one will be an A schedule student, so that students will not have to share a desk, even after they are sanitized and, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it may look in the beginning that we are not socially distancing, but no two desks next to each other will be used on the same day. Um, and so each student will have his or her own desk, those who are coming to school, so that they are not sharing a desk, a chair, inside of a desk, any supplies, anything like that with any other students, just their own. And that's another way in which we'll be able to keep uh, students extremely safe when they're in the classroom. So I'm uh, right here in a pretty important part of the school. Um, right over here we have the gym, right behind me we have the uh, music room, and right behind me we have the stairs going down to the cafeteria. And these are three places where uh, students will go throughout the course of the day if they're here. Um, one of the things we should tell you about PE is that we uh, are gonna have an extra person in there. We're gonna have a PE aide. And at no time will we have more than uh, 20 students in this gym, but with having two adults, two professionals here in the gym, will be able to split those kids up to where there's only 10 kids per adult and they'll be able to be spaced out and supervised throughout the entire PE class. Um, and students here in the building will get PE every day. Uh, now students at home will uh, more than likely need to uh, do PE via a, uh, a video. Um, because uh, trying to do that virtually at the same time is going to be extremely difficult. Uh, but they will have an opportunity to learn skills, uh, calisthenics, uh, you know, stretching, different uh, uh, sports activities, things like that, even though they will not be in the building. Uh, now behind me, the uh, stairs going up to the uh, music room. We will have music and art, and those will be inside the classrooms. Um, and there will still be no more than 10 kids in those classes, and uh, they will be spaced six feet apart. Uh, we felt like with those two particular activities and electives, it was going to be very difficult for the, uh, those teachers to go into the gen ed, gen ed classroom to teach that. Um, but for all of you virtual students, uh, there will be a separate live virtual art and live virtual math, excuse me, music class. Uh, so even though, uh, because it would be very difficult, say for Mr. Mitchell teaching music, to be able to uh, listen to students seeing on his computer while at the same time listening to students in front of him. And because they only have 30 minutes uh, per class, it would be difficult to split that in half. But Virtual students don't have to worry about missing out on live art and music instruction because uh, a time will be set aside every week for you to get that opportunity. So um, uh, no one will miss out on fine arts or PE. Now, behind me you see the uh, stairs going down to the cafeteria. Um, I mentioned earlier that about uh, the morning procedure. Well, in the morning, students will go straight to homeroom and breakfast will be delivered to the classroom. It'll be grab and go. Uh, so it'll be a, kind of a continental breakfast, you know, um, maybe not as good as the, you know, Hampton or something, but uh, you know, gonna be delicious nonetheless. Um, and those will be small enough to where the, uh, the uh, CNP staff will be able to, to deliver those to homerooms in the morning. Lunches, however, are uh, obviously going to be a little larger and uh, uh, they're gonna be hot and delicious. And uh, so uh, students will need to come as a class to pick up lunch. Uh, lunches will still be eaten in the classroom. Um, there may be some select classes of uh, really, really little kids who might uh, eat in the cafeteria. Uh, but even then, there will be six feet separating all the students. 
Um, but uh, so students will come to the cafeteria in order to pick up lunch, but they will not be eating in the cafeteria. They will come as a class and uh, pick up lunch, go through the line, and then go straight to uh, their homeroom to eat there. Uh, we have ordered more cleaning supplies and those big, huge trash cans with wheels on them and all sorts of things to make sure that uh, food messes in the classrooms uh, will be minimized almost to zero uh, so that um, uh, a, a teacher's trash can in her classroom isn't overflowing with breakfast stuff or overflowing with lunch stuff. We've uh, ordered a lot more supplies to make sure that that happens um, and, and, that, uh, and that things stay not only safe in term, safe and clean in terms of uh, uh, you know virus and sickness and things like that, but just basic sanitary stuff to make sure that things are clean. And uh, you know, if we happen to have uh, you know Crispitos one day, uh, you don't want Crispitos to be in the classroom all day long. <laughs> so I'm um, gonna make, make sure that we have uh, enough uh, supplies to keep those classrooms clean, even though they're gonna, for a short period of time, kind of become little bitty cafeterias. Uh, so that's how electives and lunch, uh, well, and breakfast are gonna work uh, with the, uh, uh, the new setup. Huh, so we are back here in my office. So <laughs> glamorous, isn't it? Um, and I wanted to show you a couple of other things. Um, of course, Wednesdays, uh, the school will be closed uh, for cleaning. And by closed, I mean no one except the custodians will be here, which means no one's answering the phone, no one is answering the door. If, you, if a parent comes by, they will not be admitted in um, because deep cleaning will be going on. And part of that deep cleaning has to do with this little bad boy right here. This is a, uh, as it says, an electrostatic sprayer. And uh, it uh, works kind of like a, I don't know, like a, um, like a leaf blower almost. Kind of like uh, it, it, it sprays out a little bit. But it sprays out a, uh, a sanitizing mist. And um, this is something that will be used at least twice, hopefully two to four times a week. Definitely on Wednesdays, definitely on Friday afternoons when students leave so that everything is sanitized for Monday morning. Um, but it's, uh, it's fairly easy to use. It's uh, fairly lightweight. Um, one was provided to each school by the district, but we went ahead and bought two more so that we've got one per floor. And that way we can cover more ground in a shorter amount of time. Uh, so we're going to be using this thing right here to make sure that um, every, uh, every room, every area of the school gets sanitized during that deep cleaning time. And again, definitely Friday afternoon. We're going to see what we can do about doing it some other afternoons as well, um, if we're able to. It's just uh, with students here, you, you really, it, it takes a little while for the mist that comes out to, uh, to dry. Um, it's nothing that has to be scrubbed or wiped down. Um, it settles and it sanitizes, uh, but it's definitely not something you want uh, kids to be around. Uh, so we want to make sure that the, the building is entirely cleared out when we do this. And so uh, that'll have a lot to do with um, whether how often we're able to do this. I mean, we will have uh, aftercare here in the afternoons. We will have um, some uh, tutoring once we kind of get things cranked up. So um, it, it'll be a little tougher to do it every single day. But trust me, um, the, 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 the system has said you've got to do this at least once a week. We have said we're going to do it at least twice a week, maybe more. Uh, so we feel very confident that uh, using this on a regular basis is going to be yet another way that we keep the school safe, sanitary, um, free of germs as much as possible. And, um, and in that sense, we'll, we'll be able to, uh, with three of these, be able to cover a whole lot of ground. So um, again, that, uh, that's just one of the ways in which we're doing it. Uh, we've got three custodians. And um, I've even been trained on this, uh, this little, uh, little thing right here uh, so that I'll be able to use it and help out as well. Um, I think the, the more of us who are using that, the more often we're using it, uh, the safer we will become and, and continue to be throughout all of this. Uh, a reminder that um, uh, Dr. Sullivan, our superintendent, has uh, stated that uh, at any point in which the trends nationally and within the state and within the county indicate um, that the numbers are too high, that the, uh, the COVID situation is too dangerous, uh, that there is a chance we could go back to being all virtual. Uh, he has also stated if the numbers start to uh, trend downward quickly, then there's a, a chance that we'll uh, all come back five days a week 
um, more quickly than, than we thought. So um, do be aware that uh, um, that there's a ch that there's a chance that something could be changed based on science, data, and what information is coming out of the, uh, the Department of Health and the CDC. Uh, now, once November 4th has passed, whichever in, uh, instructional environment you have chosen, whether it's virtual or whether it's coming to school two days a week, you are locked into that until the end of the nine weeks. And the reason for that uh, has to do with um, what goes into um, making sure that we are accountable for students um, and how they are receiving their learning and how they remain safe. Uh, for example, um, let's say uh, little Larry is a, a student in Mr. Seal's uh, second grade class and he's virtual. Well, if all of a sudden little Larry shows up on Monday for Schedule A because, you know what, his friends in the neighborhood who are going to school, they said it's a lot of fun, so now he wants to come to school. I may not have space on that particular that schedule for little Larry. I may not have space on any day for little Larry. Um, also, it's going to involve transportation, child nutrition, all sorts of other people involved for a student to come back in the building. And uh, but let's say it's the other way around. Let's say uh, little Larry is one of my in my in school students. He's on my, my Schedule A students. All of a sudden, he's not coming to school. Where's little Larry? Where is he? Find out. His parents decided they wanted him to be virtual from now on. Well, I haven't been able to, you know, as far as his attendance is concerned, I have, he hasn't been here. I haven't been able to deliver proper instruction. I don't know where he's been. So for us to be able to be accountable for every student and provide not just quality instruction, but a quality, safe environment, whichever one you choose, you're locked into until the end of the nine weeks or until Dr. Sullivan makes uh, some sort of emergency announcement to change things. Um, so please be aware of that, that there's, that there's no just shifting when, when you want to. Um, we, we've got to stay true to that. And um, a lot's gonna go into uh, teacher preparation for instruction because they'll be instructing kids at home and kids in front of them at the same time. And so uh, we need to make sure that our numbers are exactly where they need to be. Um, if you have any other questions, um, please feel free to email me here. Uh, calling me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a moving target, so I'm tough to get a lot of times. I'm in a lot of meetings, and uh, of course, once we are getting things ready for students to return, I'm not going to be hanging out in my office too much. So um, uh, an email would be a great way to get in touch with me um, if, you, if you want to ask me a specific question. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I, I truly believe this is gonna this is gonna work well. I have complete confidence in this fabulous staff here at Avondale Elementary, and uh, I just know that the best possible instruction is going to be provided for your child, whether they are at home or whether they're here or whether they're both. Um, again, thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions, just email me and let me know. Thanks again.